Hello there. Uh, this brings us to uh, question 1 of homework 10. It says, find the general solution of the given systems. Now we're given three sets of uh, linear homogeneous systems. This is the first, this is the second, well, this is the third. So we want to find the general solution of all these three linear systems. So I'm going to consider each of them one by one. So I'm going to start with question A. Now this is um, question A, and then question A says find the general solution of the linear system that has actually been written in matrix form for you. So we are given x prime equals 12, negative 9, 4, 0. This is the coefficient matrix, while this is um, this is the x which we intend to find, which we intend to find. So how then do you find, or how do you start? So normally I I usually encourage I encourage people to to follow this whole procedure because there's a procedure in trying to find the general solution of the given system. And the first thing you want to do is when you compare the, the linear homogeneous system with x prime equals ax. Now you would observe that the coefficient matrix we have here is going to be a. So the first thing is you should identify a. So my a is my a is 12 negative 9 4 and zero. This is my A. Now the second step you want to do is you want to find the engine values. We've already gone through steps like this before, so we're going to like kind of summarize the whole things we've been going through so far in past videos. The first thing you find the equation matrix, which is A, and the next thing is you find the engine values of A. So finding the engine values of A, that is, you want to solve the characteristic equation of A, and that amounts to solving. So the next one says solve a minus lambda i equals so you want to solve equals zero this is what we want to solve so we want to find the aging values then solving the aging values amounts to solving the the characteristic equation and then solving this at this a minus lambda i that is the determinant of this matrix so a minus lambda i is simply uh, the determinant of the matrix formed after you have deducted lambda from all the diagonal entries of the original matrix a so that gives us 12 minus lambda. So you have negative 9, you have 4, you have 0 minus lambda, which is negative, negative lambda. And that equals 0. Equals 0. Now when you find the determinant of this matrix, so this implies that lambda squared minus 12 lambda plus 36 equals 0. That's what it implies. Now when we solve this equation, we're going to have lambda minus 6 squared equals equals 0 and that gives us lambda equals 6 but the multiplicity the multiplicity is is 2 now since the multiplicity is 2 and we intend to find a general solution so we know we know that the general solution should be of this format x equals c1 x1 plus c2 x2. This is, this is the general format of the general solution for a homogeneous system. So when this time around, since we are having a, um, what's name, we have a um, repeated, um, repeated aging value, so we could expect that either the, the aging value we get has distinct aging vectors, that is two distinct aging vectors that correspond to the aging value, or in that case, for the other case, we could either have x1 to be k1 e to the power lambda 1t and then x2 our x is going to be k1 t e to the power lambda 1t plus k2 e to the power lambda 1t so we've already gone through the past videos on how these things are being derived so let's let's go ahead and find k1 and then we said we said the k1 here is the aging vector that corresponds to lambda 1 and then that's the same k1 here that is here and then we said the k2 here is derived from now if k1 is the, is the aging vector that corresponds with lambda 1 so that simply implies that k1 is derived from this equation here that's a minus lambda i k1 equals 0 that is k1 is the aging vector that corresponds to lambda 1 and while k2 k2 is gotten from is gotten from this equation here that's k2 equals equals k1 so you'd observe you observe this so the k1 here is now here initially it was 0 
And this time around, the next one is Q1 that depends on the former one. Anyway, let's go ahead in trying to find x1. Now to find x1, I need I need to find q1, which is the aging vector that corresponds to lambda 1. So that's going to be my step 3. So to find the aging vector, I'm going to solve a minus lambda i x equals 0. So we have x is the aging vector that corresponds to, to lambda. So now for lambda equals 6, my a minus lambda i minus lambda i x equals so for lambda equals 6 so, so anywhere we have lambda we would replace it by 6 here so what we're going to have is 6 negative 9 then we have 4 negative 6 and then our x here is just x y equals equals 0 0 so this is what we have and then when we will reduce this matrix here when it's being row reduced what we would obtain is 1, negative 3 all over 2, we have 0, we have 0, and we have x, y equals 0, 0. So this is this is exactly um, what we have. And then when we rewrite this in equation format, we have 1 times x, that is x, minus 3 all over 2, times y equals 0. Now if you, what, what you observe here is that the free variable we have here is y. So since the free variable is y, so we'll start by we we'll set y equals, you can set y to be anything. So I'm going to set my y to be 1 so since it's a free variable. So just find the basis of a solution space. So if y equals 1 then x equals, when we bring this to the other side, it becomes 3 all over 2. So x equals 3 over 2. So I've been able to find k1. So my k1 equals 3 all over 2, 1. But then I have fractions yet. But then I don't want to, I don't want to continue my, my, my solution having fractions, so I don't make any mistake. You could work with fractions, but then, since I don't want fraction, I'm going to multiply both entries here by 2. So you have 3 here, you have um, you have 2 there. So and then the reason why we did that because, is because if this is a solution, and even a, multi a multiple of that is also going to be... Um, if this belongs to the aging space, then all multiples of this is, only going to, is also going to be um, in the aging space. So definitely this is going to be an aging vector that also corresponds to lambda equals 6. So the next case is I want to find, I want to find k2. Now to find k2, I have to use, I'm going to use this, the next formula that I have here. So to find, to find k2, we solve, so we're going to solve a minus lambda i times k2 equals equals q1. So that's what we do. And then we know since we are using lambda equals 6, that is for lambda equals 6, we have a minus lambda i to be to be the same thing that we have that we have it as 6 negative 9, 4 negative 4 negative 6. So that'll be 6 negative 9. 4 negative 6 times k2. So let my k2 be x, y equals k1. So my k1 has been derived here to be 3, 2. So that is 3, 3, 2. So I want to solve the system of linear equations. Now to solve the system of linear equations, I need to row reduce the quotient matrix here. So row reducing that, what I have is 1, negative 3 all over 2. You have 0, you have 0. You have x, y equals you have half and then this is a this is zero so you'd observe that the way i got this was i had the augmented matrix i will reduce the augmented matrix of this and the constant matrix here and i obtained what i had here so having done that the next thing you do is you write this in equation form so you have x that is one times x is x negative three over two times y that is negative three all over two y equals equals half and also here, you'd observe that the free variable is y. So since the free variable is y, I'm going to set, I'm going to set y to be one. So if y is one, then x equals three all over two y plus plus half. So that's three all over two times one plus half, and that is going to give us um, that's going to give us two. So with that, I now have my next k two. That my k two equals k2 equals 2 
kt equals to 1. So that's what I have for my k2. So, and then we said x1, that is our x1 equals k1 e to the power lambda 1t. So this is my k1 here times e to the power lambda 1. So to find x1 now, my x1, my x1 is going to be, we said k1 e to the power lambda 1t. And that's going to be 3, 2, e to the power, my lambda 1 is 6, e to the power 6t. That's my k1. And then to find x2, so that is k1t e to the power lambda 1t plus k2 e to the power lambda 1, lambda 1t. So to find x2, you said it is k1, k1t e to the power lambda 1t plus k2 e to the power lambda 1, lambda 1t. And then our k1 that we that we obtained that we, that we obtained above is still 3, 2 times t e to the power. So the lambda we are still using is 6. That is this 6. 6t plus k2 that we just derived, which is 2, 1. Then e to the power 60. And then we now have the general solution, which is going to be x equals c1 x1 plus c2 times x2, which we know as the general form for the solution of a homogeneous system. Having known that x1 and x2, they are linearly independent. So this one will be c1 into um, c1 into um, our x1. So our x1 is 3 times e to the power 60. Then the lower one is 2 times e to the power 60. So that will be 3 e to the power 60, 2 e to the power 60, plus c2 times x2. That's 3 times this plus 2 times this. 3 times this plus 2 times this. So that gives us 3t e to the power 60 plus 2 e to the power 60. And then the other one is 2t e to the power 60 plus e to the power 60. So what we have here is the general solution for the linear homogeneous um, system. And then that completes the problem.